needed some, I wore black yesterday, so I was like, I need something vibrant. Huh? Um, is my mic on? Weather, 10 and 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Check, check, check. Yes, I can hear you, kind of. I just need, yes? Um, let's do it for um, the end of first weather, because I'm going to show a few uh, satellites, and then I'll call for Skycam, okay? Yeah, let's get a little giddy up, a little giddy up. Ten nine eight seven six five four three two. It's in the bathroom on the toilet. Three two one. Check check. My check sports, my check sports. Let go of him! Let go of him now! Let go of him now! A routine 911 call turns dangerous when a paramedic's attacked while on duty. If they're not going to listen to us, it's going to be really embarrassing for them because a hundred kids from a school that was shot up less than a week ago are coming, begging them, begging them to have a conversation with us. And students from the Florida high school that was the site of a mass shooting last week are now taking a road trip for change. And we begin with that story. Good evening, I'm Sonia Hill. And I'm Andy Lascano. The students say the murders of 17 of their classmates and teachers last week motivated them to take action. Here's the latest. You guys need to make sure that you stay strong and you keep the message. It's a message that students who attend Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School hope will forever alter the gun control debate. This is big. This is life changing. This is it. This is where things are going to start happening. About 100 students boarded buses bound for the state's capital. They're holding a march Wednesday demanding a ban on assault rifles and stricter gun control for those who have a history of mental illness. If they're not going to listen to us, it's going to be really embarrassing for them because 100 kids from a school that was shot up less than a week ago are coming, begging them, begging them to have a conversation with us. Some of the students say they're taking action after losing friends. I want to put them first and let them know that they were important and that they lost their lives to a shooter and they were so innocent and they didn't deserve this. Three of the students who were murdered last week were laid to rest Tuesday. Peter Wang, who died a hero after saving other students, dancer and artist Gina Rose Montalto, and Carmen Shentrup, a bright student who classmates say will be remembered for her goodness. This isn't right. It wasn't something that anybody was prepared for. It's it's hard to make peace with something that happened so violently. Students return to school next Tuesday, the first time they'll be back since the shooting that put survivors' lives on a different path. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. And on social media, a gun owner decided to destroy her handgun in the wake of the Florida shooting. 
I'm not going to let the Second Amendment anymore be used as an excuse for considering children as collateral damage. Her name is Amanda Meyer, and she posted the video to Facebook. And on it, she says she is not opposed to the Second Amendment, but she thinks that pro-gun activists and politicians have taken it way too far under the current interpretation. She also believes that people don't really need automatic weapons. Well, back here in Corpus Christi, a 17-year-old is charged with making a terroristic threat. He allegedly said he was going to blow up Moody High School. Police found out about the threat and arrested the young man overnight. He's undergoing a mental evaluation. CCISD police say even though they felt the threat was not credible and in fact unsubstantiated, a sweep was done of Moody High School this morning and security was increased at the school as well. Now this is the seventh time, seventh time since last week that there's been a threat of violence against a Coastal Bend school. Texting and driving. Most of us are guilty of doing it at one point or another, but tonight the district attorney is speaking out about it. Our John Rapolo is live in the studio with more. Hi, Sonia. You know, cell phones are an important, if not vital, part of our lives, right? Well, Nueces County DA Mark Gonzalez has put together a public service announcement about it. Take a quick look here. Most of us have smartphones, but some of us aren't always smart about how we use them. All right, Gonzalez points out many recent accidents, even a death caused by drivers texting and driving. One in four accidents are the result of distracted driving. That, according to the DA's office. Now, Gonzalez says it was time that he spoke out publicly based on the cases coming in to his office there at the courthouse. So we are at a point where people are actually getting hurt over people texting and driving. Uh, and so we need to do something. So we thought maybe we should warn the community, let them know what's going on. All right, coming up at 10, we'll take a closer look at some recent cases involving texting and driving and the deadly consequences. Don't text and drive. Stay alive. See you at 10. We're live in the studio. John Rapolo, Action 10 News. All right, Johnny, a man's been tased after found attacking paramedics on the side of the road. Watch. Let go of him! Let go of him now! Let go of him now! Well, this happened over the weekend. Friends were worried that David Parsons was having a stroke when paramedics, paramedics showed up at his home. He was drunk and acting belligerent. While being taken to the hospital, Par Parsons attacked one of the paramedics. So the driver pulled over and called for backup. That's when police say Parsons started running in and out of traffic. So a couple of paramedics tried to make sure he didn't hurt himself or anybody else. So what our crew did that night was incredible. After being physically attacked in the back of the ambulance, they still made an effort to protect the individual from oncoming traffic and then put themselves in harm's way. So when police arrived at the scene, Parsons was choking one of the paramedics. So the cops tased Parsons, arrested him, neither paramedic seriously injured. A violent road rage incident in New Hampshire left one woman on the ground shoved down by an angry driver. Police say that the male driver and the woman behind him, they had some sort of fight and it exploded when both cars ended up stopped at the light next to each other. The woman claims that the man then backed into her car and that's when she got out of her car to confront the other driver. That man then pushed the woman down to the ground. Police are investigating the incident, but they have not been able to find either driver. A couple of window washers have a really bad day at work. <laughs> he was dangling, you know, um, just, you know, open that he would hold on. Well, it's happened for about 30 minutes. The guys were dangling from the 17th floor of a building in Florida after an electrical failure on their scaffolding. More than two dozen firefighters helped rescue the guys. You could hear from the cheers from the crowd below as they were pulled to the top of the building safely. Tonight, detectives need your help finding a man. Police say that this guy is wanted for questioning about a burglary in which more than a thousand hydrocodone pills were stolen from a pharmacy on Elizabeth Street last week. Do you happen to know who this guy is? If so, call Crime Stoppers at 888-TIPS.